The subject of this video is, is how to waterproof your sleeping bag. It's a beautiful day today on the hills. Um, it's very, very sunny, but it was a cold night. Uh, there was frost on the ground this morning. I think it went down to about three degrees C. So we're at that time of year now in the UK where condensation levels uh, are much more problematic inside a tent. Longer nights aren't we? We're into short days and long nights so you're inside your tent for a long period and cooler temperatures or cold temperatures overnight and we're definitely seeing more trouble. Now obviously in a tent um, you, 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 learning how to vent a tent, especially the modern, the very small tents particularly, um, learning how to vent them properly is a big part of how to control condensation but nevertheless if it's a wild wet night on the mountains and you're having to lock down a bit it's not easy to ventilate and get all the condensation out. Now you do lose moisture, uh, you do create moisture inside your sleep, inside your tent sorry, overnight. Typically through the night you lose, you lose about a litre of water from your body, that's from your breath of course and, and from your skin. Um, vapour coming off your skin through the night. A lot of it will go into the sleeping bag of course but of course it's, it's the real problem is, is on the tent there. It's, it's where the condensation levels build and uh, they start, you, you, you can get problem of your sleeping bag rubbing against the tent and that exacerbates the problem, it gets water into a sleeping bag quickly. Um, equally if you're, if you're in a bivy bag you, you can have trouble with wetness and condensation. I talk to a lot of people, they love using bivy bags but they've always got this condensation and wetness inside the bivy in the morning and often it gets into the sleeping bag and starts to reduce the effectiveness of the down. There's quite a lot of things we should consider here. How do we waterproof a sleeping bag and what is the appropriate technique to use for uh, what could be uh, problems, especially if you're going for several nights. If it's a one night you can survive anything, but if it's, if it's a multi-stage race or it's a long trail taking many, many days, you've really got to protect your bag. So I'm going to have a look at the systems that we use at PhD. We make everything to order. We make directly for our clients. We don't sell to shops, we make for the end user. And so every aspect of the bag can be looked at before we even get the scissors out and the shears and mark out a bag and cut it. The stage to consider it is before we get to that. So I'll just run through some of the things to consider. This, I've just got this out of a stuff sack. This is a Minim 400. Now it's a very lightweight bag, it's designed for minus five, so minus five is where condensation problems really can be a, an issue for us, winter in the UK particularly. Um, so this is a very, very lightweight sleeping bag. This one's made at a thousand fill power down, it's a natural down, incredibly high quality. We use very high lofting down, but with that we use very lightweight fabrics. Now this is MX on the outer, and the inner is uh, 10x, the navy blue inner is 10x. They're both incredibly light, lightweight fabrics, downproof and breathable. MX is a beautiful fabric, we used it for years. It's got a very high tear, tear strength, which is why I really like it. It's almost strong enough to be used for parachutes, not quite, but um, it's a really tough fabric and very, very lightweight. Uh, downproof, breathable, perfect for making sleeping bags and it does have a waterproof treatment on it. It has a DWR coating um, and that is a, effectively that's a spray treatment done to the fabric before we get it and it's a, 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 a DWR coating is a spray on proofing that really creates a, a beading of water. So if you get any water on this, um, on the sleeping bag, water will bead, it won't just go through, it'll bead and then run off the bag, so it's a waterproof treatment. However, DWR treatments are short-lived, they're a very very fine spray treatment, they're not that long term, they certainly won't last the lifetime of a bag, so it's not, it's not claimed as a waterproof treatment of any real substance. It protects the bag for a while, it's not going to protect it for life. Um, so what can we do about that? And we, before we even build the sleeping bag, we can consider that. So I'll just get another bag here. I've got a few to show you. This again is a minimum. Let's move that out of my way. 
This is a Minim 400. It's the same bag. I've just got it out of the stuff sack. So it's just lofting nicely. Again, very, very lightweight. And in the, on this occasion, we've made this Minim 400 out of Ultra Shell. Now, Ultra Shell, you can see the inner there is 10x, same as before. It's 1,000 fill, uh, fill power down. It's the same sleeping bag, but Ultra Shell on the outside. Now, Ultra Shell is a, a waterproofed fabric. It's got a hydrostatic head of 1,000. Um, and um, uh, that gives us an advantage. It's an incredibly lightweight fabric, but, but it's proofed. Ultra Shell is in the same family as Dry Shell, slightly heavier fabric, and it's also in the same family of, of, of technical treatments as Hyper Shell. Hyper Shell is a proofed fabric, and it's just very, very lightweight fabric. Now, Ultra Shell is, uh, is proofed with a PU coating, and that, that makes it waterproof and breathable. And it's also, it's done on the inside of the fabric. You can't see it, it's on the underside, the side that the down is touching. Um, but that treatment is permanent. It won't come off. Even if you wash the bag several times or you, even if you mistreat the bag by accident or it just has a really hard life, the, fa the proofing on the fabric is permanent and that is a real advantage. So it's there for the life of the bag. Whether this bag is gonna be used for 10 years, 20 years, 50 years even, or handed on to the next generation, the treatment of the fabric is, is permanent, it can't come off. So it's really, really advantageous. Um, of course, this bag by its construction is not fully waterproof. You couldn't use it out in the rain if it was a wet night and it was chucking it down. You wouldn't use this bag and expect it to keep you dry overnight. And the reason for, even though that fabric's waterproof, it's been used in a way where we've created baffles or chambers to hold the down in place. These little stitch lines that we've created, those those create little holes, tiny little holes all the way up the line there where water eventually will get in. It'll get onto the cotton fabric that we've, the thread that we've used and eventually go in that way. So over time, you'll get moisture in. But that isn't normally what happens in a tent. In a tent, you've got protection from the weather. And the problem is, is dampness, condensation or wet gear in the tent, uh, or two people together with some wet gear, some boots, uh, some wet waterproofs even. I know you can put them in the vestibule, but but you still are at the bell end, but you're still gonna get, you still can have dampness inside there. And that's why this fabric is really effective for that situation where condensation dampness is, is your worry. It's very unlikely to get into that bag. You just not talk. It, it's going to withhold that sort of dampness. So ultra shell or dry shell if we build it using it on some of our bags or hyper shell which is the really really super lightweight treatment. All those fabrics are a really good way to proof a bag and uh, even at the foot end you're going to really protect that down long term and it's very very clever the way this fabric works. It's very very lightweight so it's perfect for a sleeping bag where you're carrying it probably for as much much of the time as you're using it. So uh, that sort of treatment is very good but what about if you've got a sleeping bag made out of ordinary fabrics that don't have any proofing on them? Well there is a technique that you can use Similar to using, uh, you, making a sleeping bag out of ultra shell or dry shell, you can just simply make a sleeping bag cover out of those fabrics. This is our sleeping bag cover. It's made out of dry shell. You can probably see the treatment now. The outer fabric is ripstop nylon, ripstop to help prevent tears and so on. But on the inside, the fabric has a proofing applied and it's got a milky coating in the fabric in the proofing. So that side there has got a PU coating on it and it stops moisture coming through past the fabric onto the sleeping bag. Now that's that's the way Ultra Shell build a sleeping bag out of waterproofed fabric. That's one way. But if you've got a sleeping bag, as I say, if it if it doesn't have waterproof treatment like MX, you can you can simply put your sleeping bag inside a waterproof shell. Now this sleeping bag is very clever. It's made out of a sleeping bag fabric and it's, uh, and it's a very simple construction. We've got uh, the top piece and the base piece 
full length of the sleeping bag, one piece of fabric each, and they're stitched together at the side seams, but you've got no seams over the top of the bag or the base of the bag, unlike this one here where you've got all these seams on it. This way you don't have any seams, just, or any stitch line, sorry, just the side seams. Now these side seams aren't taped, they're just constructed um, in a simple manner so water can get in at that point but water can't get in over the top or the base of the bag so it gives it a really high degree of protection from dampness and condensation and it's a really good way to protect a, just an ordinary sleeping bag as you get into the into the colder periods um, and what's very good about it is it's got that permanent proofing and it's it's got that uh, high level of breathability so condensation doesn't really become a problem inside this sleeping bag cover. I had an email from a client a couple of weeks ago saying is condensation a problem inside and actually I don't find it is. It's, it's very breathable and the seams aren't taped so the whole system breathes really well. Uh, so I find this, I've, this is mine, I've used it for a few years, and I find it a really good way to protect a sleeping bag. And even if you're just snow holing or uh, in it, where, where, where condensation is troublesome, this is going to really give a great deal of protection to your bag. So I really like that. And it's just a thin piece of fabric, very, very lightweight. Um, but you can go further. If you really need to go waterproofing your sleeping bag fully, you can go to a bivvy. Now there's loads of bivvies on the market, it's been loads for years, and they're, they're, they're made out, they're often made out of fully waterproof taped fabrics. Um, but a lot of people express trouble with them, they, they contact me and they've got, oh, bivvy bags really can be a problem because they, you get, get, the condensation levels inside them is really horrible. And because, in a bivvy bag, because your sleeping bag is, um, touching the inside of the bivvy all the time, unlike in a tent where you, you, you can do, you can mitigate that problem. You, you, you try to keep your sleeping bag off the tent walls, away from them. In a bivvy, you can't avoid it. The condensation is just building, building, building as you're losing water overnight from your body. The condensation level is just getting worse and worse and worse, and your sleeping bag is rubbing that fabric. It's actually touching your sleeping bag. And, and, the, and you just get so damp, it's okay for a night or two, anyone can cope with that. But if you are on a long trail or you're trekking for several, and you've got several nights uh, or weeks uh, in a sleeping bag, the dampness is terrible in a bivvy. So what I've done here, because I'm trying to solve that problem, what I've done here is I've made a very simple sleeping bag cover, it's like this one. It's, uh, it's like the sleep, our basic sleeping bag cover. This is made in Dryatlex. It's a waterproof laminate fabric, fully breathable, ripstop nylon. Um, all the seams down the sides are taped, so it's fully waterproof. But to mitigate the problem of condensation from that system, we've insulated the inside of the bag. So on the outer, you've got Dryalex waterproof breathable fabric. Sandwiched in between it, is Primaloft, it's 60 gram Primaloft, so it's a thin insulated synthetic layer. And then to protect the Primaloft is MX fabric, so that's like the fabric we would use for, for the sleeping bags. Um, so what you've got here is a fully waterproof breathable shell for a sleeping bag, but it's insulated to stop the condensation touching the sleeping bag. The condensation stays on the outer and eventually comes out over time. Can't keep up with the, the, the speed that you create it really in those conditions. But effectively what you're doing is you're preventing the sleeping bag rubbing and touching against that condensation of a bivvy. So you've got a, a much drier system. Adds a little bit of weight but um, to, to counter that problem, it adds some insulation. The, the, the snow line bivvy here adds about seven degrees C of insulation to your bags, but it, but, it, but it gives a full waterproof protection and it keeps your bags dry. So really like this system. Just a word of, just a little bit of extra on this. You've got to keep the fabric clean. If it gets grubby, it won't 
it won't breathe. And if it isn't breathing, you've got an increased problem of condensation. Equally, you should keep the fabric proofed on the outer with DWR coating. The sort of thing you can buy from the shops, Nick Wax or Grangers and those sorts of treatments that you can apply yourself. They're very important because they keep the outer ripstop fabric dry or they improve its dryness and that allows it, if it's dry it breathes, if it's fully wet, wetted out, you know how it goes dark when it wets out these fabrics. We see it, we all see it on our waterproof uh, jackets and so on. Try and keep it clean and keep the fabric to dry out quickly and bead, get the water off it and then it breathes better. But that essentially is a fully waterproof shell of a sleeping bag. But again, yet, yet again, just be aware, I haven't put a you know, water will, even if you cinch it down to a tiny little hole, water would eventually get it round at the face. So you've got to consider how do you totally waterproof this, this kit. A tarp is a really good way to do it. It's a really nice way to, to camp using a tarp and a tarp, using a tarp, excuse me, and a uh, waterproof shell over the top. That really gives you a, a very effective treatment. Um, but So let's just have a look at one more consideration. With all of our sleeping bags we also offer to make the sleeping bag in a fully waterproofed fabric. Dry Alex, fully waterproofed and taped down the seams. So I've just got this one out of its bag. It's lofting beautifully and that is a waterproof shell with a taped seam. So it's fully waterproof. The bag is proofed against some really damp conditions. Just again, be aware, even if you cinch it down, water will get in there. So you've got to either be under a, a tarp or in, in, under a, a shelf or a shelter or in a little cave. Or you'd use this in a snow hole, of course, if you're getting damp conditions. When you cook in a snow hole, it, it warms up and it drips. So you can really protect the bag by doing this. Um, so this is the waterproof shell that we can put on a sleeping bag. This one has a, this one actually has a full length zip on it and we put a, a baffle over the top of it, a waterproof baffle. It's, uh, it's, it's held down with Velcro. So it's really well protected and waterproofed. Um, just, a, just a bit of information on packing it. Because it's fully waterproofed and the seams are taped and so on, it takes a while to pack it. You just need to go steady. You pack it into a stuff sack from the foot end, squash it in, and just take your time to get the air out. The air really comes from the inner. You could turn it inside out to pack it, but it's, it's a waste of time, isn't it? It's a waste of effort. Pack it as it is, but just take time to let the air come out because it's slower because of all the, the proofing on the bag, it's slower for the air to get through. But there you go. Those are the ways to proof a sleeping bag and give it a, a degree of protection from wetness and moisture and so on. Beyond that, really, you're looking at synthetic bags. If you really are going to get wet, if you're camping in really wet, wet situations, a synthetic is worth considering. Even though, I mean, a synthetic will take water in eventually and you lose some of the insulation um, because it's being replaced. The, those air pockets eventually are replaced by water when it gets into the synthetic. So I think that's a pretty miserable situation. This is a really good way to look at it is to look at the what are the best ways to proof the bag and what's the correct level of proofing. You wouldn't want to use this on a, a, a race or a lightweight trail. It's just too heavy using a lightweight bag with a waterproof fabric like Ultra Shelt, that's more relevant where you've got a level of condensation. Or use the shelves to go over the top of your bag. So it's just what's relevant for the, uh, for the trip you're planning. All right, cheers.